Yes, Lord, about your altar. See us, Lord, about your altar, though so many we are one. Many souls by love united in the heart of Christ your Son. Hear our prayers, O loving Father, hear in them your Son, our Lord. Hear him speak our love and worship as we sing with one accord. Once were seen the blood and water, now is seen but bread and wine. Once in human form he suffered, now his form is but a sign. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, my brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. As we gather at this Mass, we pray in a special way for the repose of the souls of Fernando Cardoso and George Klepka, and for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine and Russia. For the times we failed to love God as we should, we bow our heads and ask for His mercy, for He is full of gentleness and compassion. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at God's right hand. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life that we may be ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. There was a man living in Babylon whose name was Joachim. He married the daughter of Hilkiah named Susanna, a very beautiful woman and one who feared the Lord. Her parents were righteous and had trained their daughter according to the law of Moses. Joachim was very rich and had a fine garden adjoining his house. The Jews used to come to him because he was the most honored of them all. That year, two elders from the people were appointed as judges. Concerning them, the Lord had said, Wickedness came forth from Babylon, from elders who were judges and who were supposed to govern the people. These men were frequently at Joachim's house, and all who had a case to be tried came to them there. When the people left at noon, Susanna would go into her husband's garden to walk. Every day, the two elders used to see her, going in and walking about, and they began to lust for her. They suppressed their consciences and turned away their eyes from looking to heaven, or remembering their duty to administer justice. Once, while they were watching for an opportune day, Susanna went in as before with only two maids, and wished to bathe in the garden for it was a hot day. No one was there except the two elders, who had hidden themselves and were watching her. When the maids had gone out, the two elders got up and ran to her. They said, Look, the garden doors are shut, and no one can see us. We are burning with desire for you, so give your consent and lie with us. If you refuse, we will testify against you that a young man was with you, and this was why you sent your maids away. Susanna groaned and said, I am completely trapped, for if I do this, it will mean death for me. If I do not, I cannot escape your hands. I choose not to do it. I will fall into your hands rather than sin in the sight of the Lord. 
Then Susanna cried out with a loud voice, and the two elders shouted against her, and one of them ran and opened the garden doors. When the people in the house heard the shouting in the garden, they rushed in at the side door to see what had happened to her. And when the elders told their story, the servants felt very much ashamed, for nothing like this had ever been said about Susanna. The next day, when the people gathered at the house of her husband, Joachim, the two elder came, full of their wicked plot to have Susanna put to death. In the presence of the people, they said, send for Susanna, daughter of Hilkiah, the wife of Joachim. So they sent for her, and she came with her parents, her children, and all her relatives. Those who were with her and all who saw her were weeping. Then the two elders stood up before the people and laid their hands on her head. Through her tears, she looked up toward heaven, for her heart trusted in the Lord. The elders said, While we were walking in the garden alone, this woman came in with two maids, shut the garden doors and dismissed the maids. Then a young man who was hiding there came to her and lay with her. We were in a corner of the garden, and when we saw this wickedness, we ran to them. Although we saw them embracing, we could not hold the man because he was stronger than we, and he opened the doors and got away. We did, however, seize this woman and asked who the young man was, but she would not tell us. These things we testify. Because Susanna's accusers were elders of the people and judges, the assembly believed them and condemned Susanna to death. Then Susanna cried out with a loud voice and said, O eternal God, you know what is secret and are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that these men have given false evidence against me and now I am to die, though I have done none of the wicked things that they have charged against me. The Lord heard her cry. Just as she was being led off to execution, God stirred up in the Holy Spirit of a young lad named Daniel, and he shouted with a loud voice, I want no part in shedding this woman's blood. All the people turned to him and asked, What is this you are saying? Taking his stand amongst them, he said, Are you such fools, O Israelites, as to condemn a daughter of Israel without examination and without learning the facts? Return to court for these men have given false evidence against her. So all the people hurried back, and the rest of the elders said to him, Come, sit among us and inform us, for God has given you the standing of an elder. Daniel said to them, Separate the men from each other, and I will examine them. When they were separated from each other, he summoned one of them and said, You old relic of wicked days, your sins have now come home. Which of you have committed in the past, pronouncing unjust judgments, condemning the innocent and acquitting the guilty, though the Lord said, you shall not put an innocent and righteous person to death? Now then, if you really saw this woman, tell me this. Under what tree did you see them being intimate with each other? He answered, under a mastic tree. And Daniel said, very well. This lie has cost you your head, for the angel of God has received the sentence from God and will immediately cut you in two. Then putting him to one side, he ordered them to bring the other. And he said to him, You offspring of Canaan and not of Judah, beauty has beguiled you and lust has perverted your heart. This is how you have been treating the daughters of Israel and they were intimate with you through fear. But a daughter of Judah would not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, tell me, under what tree did you catch them being intimate with each other? He answered, under an evergreen oak. Daniel said to him, very well, this lie has cost you also your head, for the angel of God is waiting with his sword to split you in two so as to destroy you both. Then the whole assembly raised a great shout and blessed God who saves those who hope in him. And they took action against the two elders, because out of their own mouths Daniel had convicted them of bearing false witness. They did to them as they had wickedly planned to do to their neighbour. Acting in accordance with the law of Moses, they put them to death. 
Thus, innocent blood was spent, spared that day. Hilkiah and his wife praised God for their daughter, Susanna. So did her husband, Joachim, and all their relatives. And from that day onward, Daniel had a great reputation among the people. The word of the Lord. Though I walk in the valley of darkness, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Though I walk in the valley of darkness, I fear no evil, for you are with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Though I walk in the valley of darkness, I fear no evil, for you are with me. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of darkness, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Though I walk in the valley of darkness, I fear no evil, for you are with me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Though I walk in the valley of darkness, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Though I walk in the valley of darkness, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will not die forever. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus spoke to the people, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Then the Pharisees said to him, You are testifying on your own behalf. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid because I know where I have come from and where I am going. But you do not know where I come from or where I am going. You judge by human standards. I judge no one. Yet even if I do judge, my judgment is valid for it is not I alone who judge, but I and the Father who sent me. In your law it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is valid. I testify, on, I testify on my own behalf, and the Father who sent me testifies on my behalf. Then they said to him, Where is your Father? Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my Father. If you knew me, you would know my Father also. Jesus spoke these words while he was teaching in the treasury of the temple, but no one arrested him because his hour had not yet come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of the Gospel wipe away our sin. Amen. Today it's all about judgments. We hear from the judge of the world, Jesus Christ, who is speaking the truth of who he is and they reject it because they're uncomfortable. And we hear the powerful story of the righteousness of Susanna in the first reading, and the hypocrisy and the lies of the judges who should be righteous. And throughout the scriptures, this is one of my favorite passages because it shows that those who are righteous, even when evil comes, that God will deliver them. The truth always comes out 
when you are hiding something, one lie turns into a second lie, turns into a third lie. And over time, eventually, we forget. What was that that I said? And then he created a new lie and a new story. But when you speak the truth, it's consistent. Doesn't matter who you're speaking to. Doesn't matter how much time passes. The truth is the truth. And so just as time has passed since Jesus first disclosed these truths, they remain true. Whether the atheist, the agnostic, or the Christian believes what Jesus says, it will always hold true. For he is the source of all life, the King of kings, the one who has come to redeem us from our sin. When he says, this is my body, this is my blood, it is, in all times and all places. When he says, love of God, love of neighbor, that's the way to heaven, it's true. We need to follow it in all times and in all places. Everything Jesus gives us is consistent because he is the source of all righteousness. And Susanna had to make a decision. While she felt cornered, she decided that no matter what happened to her, she was not going to disappoint God. This is true of many of the saints, too, especially the martyrs. Death did not scare them. Public perception did not change them. They were going to remain faithful. They wanted to be righteous. The question is for us, are we willing to have that same boldness and courage in the Lord? No matter what public perception says, no matter what social trends are, no matter what the government says is legal or not legal, our judge tells us what we should be doing. And as we approach these last two weeks before we celebrate the great Paschal mystery of the dying and rising of Jesus, in very tangible ways, friends, the Susanna story is our story. And for those who have been accused of something they haven't done, having worked in the prison system, this radiates in my life. And also as a priest, it radiates in my life when I hear of things said of others, especially when I don't believe them to be true. How often are we also called to be like Daniel, to stand up for those who have no voice, to stand up for those who've been accused of things they haven't done? Are we willing to put our neck on the line and seek true justice? Or are we afraid? Well, I don't want to get pulled into that story. It just seems very murky. I don't want to go there. What if it damages my rep? Daniel wasn't concerned about that, was he? He was concerned about making sure that an innocent person was not charged. May we, too, have the boldness of the scriptures that we hear today, friends, not just today as it's in the forefront of our mind, but every day. Because if it hasn't happened to us yet, it likely will. And then the question is, what are we going to do? Holy Spirit, help us to have the wisdom, the endurance, and the understanding to stand up for righteousness in every situation. We entrust our prayers to the Lord with hearts that are full of faith. With confidence we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the universal church. May the Holy Spirit breathe truth and courage into her leaders and all the faithful, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the leaders of nations. May God's justice and righteousness guide all diplomacy, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are falsely accused. May the Lord bring light and to the truth and renew the dignity of each who suffer, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our community of faith here at St. Joseph. May the light of Christ permeate all that we do each day, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and the diaconate, especially in our great diocese, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who have died. We remember especially Fernando and George, the holy souls in purgatory, and all who have died. That they may rest in the peace of God's perfect love, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions we verbalize to God from the silence of our hearts.
Loving Father, we are grateful for your continued provision, knowing that every good and perfect gift comes from you. May we have the boldness and the courage of Susanna and Daniel so that we too stand up for justice, not just for ourselves, but for others as well. We offer these petitions in the name of your Son and our Lord, Jesus Christ. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mingling of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine which we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, of my iniquity. Cleanse me of my many sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries, we may bring before you as the fruit of bodily penance a joyful purity of heart through Christ our Lord. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty. Since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As an exaltation, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. My Jesus' mercy. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Gerard, our Bishop, and all the clergy and religious. Remember your servants, Fernando and George, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles, with Susanna and Daniel, St. Catherine of Alexandria, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Turn and offer one another a sign of the Lord's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free us by this your most holy body and blood from all our sins and from all that is evil. Keep us faithful to your commandments and never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. For those receiving Jesus in a spiritual communion, I invite you to pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Strengthened by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O Lord, that through them we may constantly be cleansed of our faults, and by following Christ, hasten our steps upward toward you. Through Christ our Lord. Let us turn to our Blessed Mother as we pray. We fly to thy protection, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Good Saint Joseph, ever watchful guardian of the Holy Family, protect the chosen people of Jesus Christ. Keep us free from the blight of error and corruption, and be our ally in the conflict with the powers of darkness. As of old, you rescued the child Jesus from the plots of Herod. So now defend the universal church from all harm. Keep us one and all under your continual protection, so that by your help and example, we may lead a holy life, die a happy death, and come to possess eternal life in heaven. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Our Lenten journey continues. Let us go forth in the peace and love of Jesus Christ. We and grape contain the meaning, food and drink he is to all. One in him we come adoring, gathered by his loving call. Hear us yet, so much is needful in our frail disordered life. Stay with us and tend our weakness till that day of no more strife. Members of his mystic body, now we know our prayer is heard. Heard by you because your children have received the eternal word. God bless you. Have a good day.